Um, somebody um, already the link has been put on the chat, by the way. Somebody was asking to have the, the link to log. Um, somebody said, is there a plan to link the log with humanitarian logistics standards? Uh, it becomes confusing for national organizations to have so many different resources floating around. Um, how can health focused GLC partners engage? Um, the, the lot of initiatives around, again, the sense of aggregating projects. So uh, Kelly, what's your thoughts on that? The, the sense of uh, lots of resources and aggregation needed? Um, okay, line by line, if we're talking about the log specifically being linked to humanitarian standards, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the right question. Uh, I would view this as being a compendium and a, a companion piece to what we would define as standards. As was mentioned in the last uh, group of presenters, the, what defines humanitarian logistics isn't necessarily different than what defines the rest of logistics operation. It tends to be more flat in that humanitarian logistics practitioners need to know more things than a standard professional, which may need to know only one or two areas of expertise. That said, what defines a humanitarian logistics standard versus a regular logistics standard? Uh, I, I think the simplest way would be that we are not discriminating between different areas of intervention when it comes to logistics. We are not setting a goal or a, a, a fence post to say that, hey, this is what successful intervention in a humanitarian logistics context looks like. If the standards are the what, the log is meant to be the how. Because uh, many of the standards really get to the level of saying, well, you should have, you know, monthly inventory checks, or you should be looking for uh, having a manual for, for what it means to manage your fleet, but it doesn't really get into the details. What the log is doing is it's providing a large amount of open-ended material coming from many sources, uh, and people can pick and choose. I will admit that sometimes it can be overwhelming. Uh, even lately, we've been having the conversation internally that there's so much information coming at us that it can be a lot. Um, to follow up on the section talking about the med log component, um, so there already is a full, very large standalone section on cold chain that we put together specifically because of the, the vaccine supply chain questions that have come up lately. And uh, we actually also went out of our way and did multi-language translations on that. Um, it's not online yet, but we can make them available to anyone who has asked, and we have had multiple uh, NDMOs and small NGOs ask for that. The other components of medicine, some of which has been interwoven into the other components like warehousing uh, or, or uh, aviation, sea and maritime, anything that would potentially involve the handling of pharmaceuticals, we haven't necessarily broken it down, but if that's a strong area of interest, we can definitely expand upon that as well. Please keep in mind that what we are focusing on, it's not... It's not going to be focusing on how a humanitarian would do a thing. It's rather what it is it means to manage X. So if you're going to be managing pharmaceuticals, you have to know temperature controls, batch lot, expiration, manufacturer, whether or not it's allowed in the country of operation. We're not going to be telling you what you're going to do with that. So a lot of those things can naturally be sort of inserted into other areas, including procurement, into customs, into transportation. Uh, and as it pertains to trying to combine this with other initiatives, I mean, there is cross-pollination. Um, with the training unit that we have internally. And this is actually going to be moved over as uh, Magnus was saying to the new website. So it is going to be actually sharing information with uh, the GLC website and log IE because it's all going to be on Drupal. And it, that's the plan. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything fancy to show you because we're sort of coming in phase two or three behind that. Um, <laughs> in terms of doing a lot of, because uh, the data isn't dynamic. A lot of it is quite static. You know, what it, INCO terms change every 10 years, you know, what it means to actually put things onto a 747 hasn't changed that much. And when they do, it's usually discrete and incremental and we can update it as is. A lot of the other information that's on the platform is coming from like, is there a disaster? Are the roads down? And so it's a lot more flexible. So I, I hear okay. you, but okay. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's good. That's answered the questions. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rushing you because we haven't got a lot of time and I've got to ask some questions to the others. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Julie, in terms of um, the training, uh, a couple of questions on the VR element of the training. Uh, will the platform be available for partners to use for organization specific uh, CIMEX activities? And what's the average cost per participant? What will you do with the headsets? You may not be able to answer those questions, but you can try. No, there's some great questions. Thank you very much. So the first one I'll address is on the cost of per participant. 
And I think when we talk about the pilot, it's a little bit difficult to say what the cost was because, of course, we had to purchase all of the headsets and build the entire infrastructure. So that per cost was quite high if we divide it there. But of course, um, after a successful pilot, our intention is that we will continue to offer more and more sessions. So now we have uh, two sessions scheduled, one for May, which is fully, uh, all the participants are, are selected at this point, and uh, one available in, in July as well, as well as some sessions in the fall. So we really hope that we see some more nominations for those and have participants involved. So what is the cost uh, for the sending organizations? At this point, the cost is simply to ship the device back to us. So if you're within Europe, that looks at about 30 euros per participant, per facilitator. Uh, if you're in the Middle East or Africa, North America, Asia, anywhere else in the world, it can be up to 90 euros. So really the cost is quite minimal, especially when we compare it to the face-to-face -face training. And that's, of course, just the direct cost. Uh, there's other uh, bigger costs that are a bit more complicated, but we can share more about that in our um, training 2.0 session on Thursday. And it did look fascinating. So well done on that. Really great. Um, we don't have Georgina online to talk about REC, but we do have, I know in the in the audience, we have uh, some people who are involved in the REC project. Uh, Sue from Save the Children or Christian from DRC, for instance, Nico from IFRC. There's one quick question. Um, I, I don't know whether, um, Nico, do, are you able to join us from IFRC and put your camera on and your microphone? If not, Sue? Sue's there. I can see Sue. Um, There's a question. <laughs> oh, no, Nic Nic Nicola's there. Okay. So just tell me, I mean, are you getting a lot out of this project? Is it working for you? And there's a question here, how will WASH sector be linked to the environmental work for reverse logistics? Um, but I mean, just in terms of, you know, how, how the REC project is working and, and uh, your comments on it, Nicola. I think that Sue is much uh, better to comment on this one. Uh, I wasn't directly involved. Me personally, I wasn't directly involved to, to the whole thing. Sorry. Okay, so so you want Sue to take it? Okay. Yes, Christians, please. Christians sorry. there as well. Sorry. I just, because the three of us. You start, Sue, and then I jump in. Yeah, I don't mean, I hate, I'm not wishing to put people <laughs> in, in the spot. I mean, I've not warned you I'm going to come to you. So if you don't want to, to, to mention it, don't get to talk about it, don't. Are you okay, Sue? Um, sorry, I sorry, I got engaged on something else then. Christian, do you want to start while I get my head in the right space? Yeah, sorry. I mean, we're, just, okay, we're coming we'll, to the end, so it's all very we'll, brief. We'll try that. We'll, we'll try that. No worries. Yeah. So so basically, it's it's something that we've been working on for quite a while, and it, there's been a lot of thinking on the on the backside. Part of it is, is, is hinging on, um, on the final bits and pieces of donor funding um, in order to really kick it off and, and get it in there. But the idea is basically to, to build up uh, and gather information for, for all the partners and all the participants and have Logs Cluster basically be the driver of, of, of gathering the information that can be used across the board, irrespective of what sector it is within. So yes, there will be something for the wash, there will be something for shelter, there will be something for the other ones as well. But the idea is to look at the entire UN channel logistics supply chain and see how can we manage waste within that. Um, and, and, and then we, gather that information, yeah. And, and I think, you know, we're saying reverse logistics is only part of, of any waste management. You know, it's the bigger piece around, you can still move things, you don't have to move them back if we design what the packaging or what the, what the method of the movement is. So it's not just about reverse logistics, but as Christian said, it's trying to gather all of that and look at what fits into each sector because we realize that it's, it won't work for everything. You know, as we talked about yesterday, pharma, pharmaceuticals is perhaps an area which, which will pose different problems to, as you said there with the wash cluster. So it's got to be something that we can look at that's implementable an operational for a, a, a variety of contexts to do that. Okay, well, yeah. there we are going to leave it because we just need a very a short break. We're coming back in, in uh, 10 minutes uh, for really to sort of do a bit of a conclusion of the open part of the session. Thank you all very much indeed. Really interesting um, uh, activities there that we're hearing about initiatives, some of which, as we've said, will be in the marketplace sessions at the end of the week. So really worth uh, going to look for some more details there.